Hey guys, and how's it going? This is gonna be part two of this snapper lawn tractor that was donated to us uh, from a subscriber who uh, scored it at a scrapyard. It was getting thrown out and he uh, sent me a picture and said, would you be interested in this for uh, video purposes? I said, sure. So on part one, we got the engine running. Actually, there was no issues with that whatsoever. Actually, it looked like somebody possibly even decided to help service it a little bit. The air cleaner was spotless. Primed it with some gas a couple of times and then it actually runs off the fuel that was in it. A little v, uh, opposing twin Briggs. And it seems like it, you know, for the amount of time that we ran it, which was probably about a minute or so, everything seemed fine. Read the throttle up, it's not noisy. Oil's a little dirty, but other than that, uh, it seems in fairly decent shape. The belt going down to the mower deck probably has about one or two revolutions in it before it snaps in half you think it looks bad there wait <laughs> there's this left of the belt down below if you can see it it's about as thickness of a <laughs> inside of a pen so we're not dealing with that right now but what we are going to be dealing with is the transmission it was no good it would not go in move the tractor in any sort so we ended up gutting it out of the tractor in the last video that was a bit of a pain in the ass due to the way it had to come out it uh, took some finagling but we got it the disc drive transmission i was hoping for a regular gearbox so that we can possibly make this maybe a mud mower but instead it has the drive disc on it we'll see how it does but anyway it's inside the gearbox that we have an issue so without further ado let's get into this tear it apart and see what happened so we get a part one, we kind of looked into it. There was a peep hole or a fill hole. I'm not quite sure what it's supposed to be. There was an access hole right here. Took that off of there and looked inside. You could actually see a chain was not on one of the sprockets. So I suspect uh, either chain broke or something broke that held the chain, but not quite sure. We have a bunch of screws going around holding the cover. Let's get them out of there and hopefully we could split this whole assembly and find out what happened and fix what's inside there. Let's go get something to buzz them out. It's got a bolt right here going right through it. Looks like a 916. Let's see if we get that out of there. I'm not sure if that held anything or not. Probably, uh, I wonder if we could stand it up in a milk crate to clear that axle. We're in. Oof, what a mess. Let's go get some better light on that. And let's see what we have. So that's supposed to have a chain on it. So a little chain runs. I don't know if that's the brake. This is that shift fork that puts it in high and low range that slides that back and forth that out of the way. Actually, can we remove that whole assembly without losing it? All right, so that's out of there. What was that? I don't know, lose orientation and stuff. So that's the pin that went through it. But what did that go on? So that, so that's the output going to this axle, which is our drive axle. But this is the main one that looks like broke. That's why it wouldn't roll. Just jammed up around it. Let's get that out of there. So it ate a chain. Did it just break it? It literally busted that chain right in half. Man, I wouldn't have expected that, huh? I think it just wore over time. Maybe it bound up and it was just rocking back and forth and it cut through it. It looks like that one's really elongated. Let's go get it. I'm going to go grab it, 
bring it over to the parts washer. I'm going to wash all that crap out of it. Here's a washer. It's like a thrust washer. It probably went up something like that. It's going to be fun trying to put this thing back together with getting all the pieces to line up. Maybe if we get that brake drum off, we can set everything up in the cover lined up because this axle has to stay behind too. Because that goes inside. So this piece goes inside the, the drive. Goes inside that axle. I don't see us taking that out of there, do we? That might be a little bit of a pain in the ass. Alright, I'm going to go clean up some stuff and I'll bring you back. Get that chain to undouble itself. Alright guys. And that's just odd. Because you would think if it was that much, all the other links would be taken out. Why was it just that one failed? It's not like it's it's rusty, you know. It's get all the other links are free. Hmm. Just don't know. Maybe just over time, it just kind of kept working itself. Let's see. We might find more something that may have caused it internally as you go further. Uh, we can try to get some of this stuff out of our way. bearing right there still turns a little thrust washer I don't know if that's a, a clip or what what that is I want to guess that would have been like that like that that. Still can't get that bearing off. It's got a set of planetary gears in it behind it. Can't really see. I think we're going to be bound up on that cover though. I think we tried moving that when it was still in the tractor. I'm talking about. Getting that to move off the shaft. Oh no. Oh good. I'm gonna take a, a moment, I'm gonna go clean this surface up a little bit more to get that to come off of there a little easier. Just egged out from the bolt of the hub. That's where the wheel is right there. There we go. Wouldn't exactly say that's nice clean gear oil. I would expect the chain to fail for that though. There's that little, so you can get you closer. That's like a differential. Does it put power to both sides? So if I held this axle, will it turn the other axle? Or is it just one wheel drive? Yeah, she's a little clunky, huh? You think, think that's a differential? I gotta use two hands. You gotta hold this one still, turn it, and see if it turns the other side. Let's see what we get. Yeah. Okay. All right, now I'm going to go wash everything up and see what we got to work with. Well, I got everything cleaned up and after doing so, was able to witness what I believe happened to it and caused it to do what it did. 
So looking at, you know, probably explain how it works first. So this is where the rubber disc is under the tractor. This is the drive shaft comes back. The two discs hit each other and the rubber disc spins this. Goes from a sprocket chain. And then this is the selector for high and low range. So this goes up and down and picks either this gear or this gear to drive power to either this gear or this gear. This is flipped over. Uh, and then the sprocket in the middle of that goes back and drives the axle with the differential. Anyway, if you look close, you can see a swirl pattern all over the one side where the chain was. So I think what happened was, I think the pin on the chain was loose and it walked to one side and it kept smashing into the gear every time around. And that over time put enough stress on that every time it hit to start bending this to where it finally tore it apart. So it was just a pin in the chain, I think, is what took it out and caused it to do all that damage. So now we gotta try to put it all back together and I also have to look for some chain that is roughly the same as that or, I, I don't even know if we can use the master link because if, if that hit, I'm kind of concerned about, a master link is a little bit taller than a regular one, but if I can get a regular link, we could probably just hammer it over and make one solid piece of it again. I'm gonna go check my stash, see what I got and see if we can come up for something for that. And don't you just love it? When hoarding pays off, I believe this is our right chain. It's a 50. That's on there. It's going to be the right stuff. And it has a master link. Not that I, again, I don't think we can use that. Let's go line that up on the bench and cut ourselves a section out. Yeah, it looks like we got to split it. You got to pull that one right there. Let's see if we can get it with this guy. The little jaws on it that grab around it and then they, they'll push out the the center pin right. so you can see it's going to want to flop over on me yeah, i gotta leave it laying down You gotta go all the way, just enough to get the pin out. That's down now. And sometimes you could take it and swing it over and, and pull it off. I have to go a little more. See that that's recessed. And I'm gonna need a pair. You get the idea. I'm gonna swing that out and I'll take that apart. There's our chain of length. I'm gonna go feed the other one back through and just press it back the other way, close it up with no master link. See if we can use the vise to crush it back in. It might be a little, there it goes. I'm going to work on that a little bit more. Uh, I want to get it so that the pin is flush on both sides. Right now it's smooth and it's, it's a little proud on this side. So I'm probably just going to try tapping it with a hammer. And then I'm gonna, when I get it, I'm going to take it and peen it back over so it has a little bit of a mushroom on top of it so that uh, it doesn't want to work its way out. And that should clear it. I think we got it with that. I 
necklace for the lady. So I think this is going to be like trying to wrestle three greasy footballs at the same time while trying to film and making sure our camera can see. So I'm probably just going to go put it all together the best I can and uh, bring you back when that happens. And I did get it all back together. Well, <laughs> all inside right now. No parts left over. I'll do a quick little rundown of how it works. So this is the shaft that the disc, that rubber disc under the trans slides forward and back. It has the five speeds in reverse. And on the, tran the tractor, there's that metal plate. So it has a metal plate hitting a rubber disc here, driving it. And where you move that disc faster or slower is the speed going into this gearbox. I'll turn that for an example. And you can see right now it's in high gear. There's a set of gears right here. This bottom one is in contact with the one that's in there. Then when that turns, it spins this whole shaft, which has the sprocket on it, the one that broke and jammed, and then turns the axle with the, the uh, differential on the other side of it. To go into low gear, yeah. You would change, take the shift fork. Now it's not supported, but that shift fork would come up. Make contact with that top gear. I think you get the idea. And then when you turn that, that turns it, but much slower. I get everything, everything gets supported because the other cover's not on it. The other half of all these shafts aren't supported. That's pretty much how it works. So now I got to get all that squeezed back together. I got, um, I got rid of the cork gasket. It was probably a, between a 16th and an eighth. I'm going to put a, just a nice heavy bead of, uh, the black right stuff down on there, gasket maker. And I'll get that cover back on and kind of squish her all together. I think the only thing we have to do, we've got a thrust, thrust washer that needs to go there. And I think that's it. I'm gooing in. That one's going to line up. And this one too. There it goes. I don't like the, how much play that one has on it. That's what it is, though. That's the one that holds that center. I'm gonna get all those bolts started. I'm just gonna snug them down. I'm not gonna crank down. I'm just probably like leave the gap like it is, let it set up for, I don't know, half hour, 45 minutes, and then I'll suck all the bolts in the rest of the way. Again, make that little bit of air gap that was there with the uh, cork gasket. So they're all kind of cinched down again. There's a gap in between there. One thing is you would think they would have a better seal than that. This is the only thing that they use for a seal that goes over the top of it and gets clamped, but it's not. You know, I wouldn't exactly call that weather tight, but I guess it's kind of like you figure like a chain on a motorcycle. It's not that important, but I wouldn't want, like if you drove the thing in the water, that thing would just kind of fill right up and you get water down inside there. And probably the drain plug, you probably fill it up only to about, maybe about right there to the top of that plug anyway. So, and then as it, as everything spins around, it just kind of, you know, splashes up against it. I'll probably go for like a really thick gear oil maybe. So is it a good sign if I turn this, the output axle turns? I should probably try and shift it, huh? Grab with a pair of pliers. There it goes. One gear. Had a neutral too, didn't it say neutral on there? So that explains a few things. I had some parts in the wrong place. So this. I do not ever remember taking that out though. That's supposed to have a bolt in it. 
And that's why I had so much play in it. And then this fork is supposed to have those two pins in it, like that. That explains it. Like it's a washer, that's why the washer was sloppy. I done screwed up. I had to go take it apart and go hunt again. Let me go get that back together correctly. Alright, now we got it, I think. That's first gear. And then being held down. There's, there's a spring-loaded pressure on that one right there, so it's going to fight me. But that lifts up and will contact second gear. So we just got to make sure that that does not move when I'm putting the cover on, because that has to get bolted through that whole assembly. Without losing it, without losing the washer too. Ooh, that's going to be a little tedious. I should, actually, I should probably put the bolt maybe from the other side and tape it to the cover up, and then lay the cover down on it. That's our plan. That's what we're doing with. Now all the parts are in the right spot. I like that better. In some other, right? As long as I can get everything back together the way it was, we got to get that bolt, those two pins. Let's get that nut on that bolt real quick before we lose it. I gotta go buzz around it with my bolts again. Good thing I caught it before the ceiling got hard. Hey, function check 2.0. Try this again. Power in, gas turning. There's low gear. It's high in the, in the middle, should be neutral. There's neutral. Yeehaw! Woohoo! Fixed! Kinda. <laughs> Got overconfident. Alright. Clean the paws. Well, I feel pretty comfortable that that is how it's supposed to be back together. I'm not positive, but I'm feeling pretty comfortable that it's back together like it should. So I'm gonna go wrestle that back into the tractor and uh, see how that goes. That slider assembly fell out. I just put the knuckle back on it with nothing holding it from left to right. So. I say we try to strategically put a pair of vice grips on it because we have to get the axle back through this assembly while we're putting it on. Actually, we need the other half of that too. That boot's all tore up, but that needs to go down in there too. Oh, this is going to be fun. I wouldn't exactly say it's light. Remember how we did this. Inch too short. Closer. I'm going to knock it off the lift. Close. I got to go wiggle this piece in and get the bolt on that side, but I think we're pretty close. I can flip the other end up. I asked one of you guys to help hold that. But you're slacking. We've got to go with the alternative. It's getting 
this closer. I'd really like to get that bolt started on the other side of the axle. Right there, I'm stuck. I have the, <laughs> what was fighting me, the brake pedal was on and it was not allowing the brake drum to slide in. So I took the cable back off the brake band and I was able to get the rest of the way in. If I can get a couple of bolts started maybe on here, it'll suck it up into place and then I think we'll be able to get that. Now they got it all back together and it rolls. They changed that bound up in its sprockets. I'm gonna go hit it quick with the pressure washer and knock all the crap off it before we put the tins back on.
little easier than the first time. Nice when the transmission rolls. So one thing I noticed on the drive disc, compared to a regular snowblower, which is com most commonly what you see them on, this one has, I should pop it in gear, where the outer part of the disc turns separate from the inner, almost like it's a slip clutch. I haven't seen that before either, so I don't know if that's just wore out. That's how it's supposed to be. I'm pretty sure that's how it's supposed to be. I, what I would guess is when you let off the brake pedal and you got it in gear, it has a little bit of spin so that you're just not popping wheelies and you know having it very abrupt every time you let the clutch out. On a snowblower, it's not so much of a deal because you're going, it, it's also geared so slow, it really doesn't matter. We're gonna go find out. I think our next step, let's go fire it up, pop it in gear and see what it does. I still don't have gear oil in there, but I don't think it's gonna hurt anything. Hey, now that everything's totally soaked, what do you think our chances are that it'll fire right up? Right, we need some choke. That's not choke. That's choke. Give her some throttle. And see if it'll take. You're getting nothing. It probably thinks the safety's not doing what it's supposed to be doing. Either that we don't have power. done broke some brake pedal is down I don't know about the seat safety wire switches maybe that's in neutral transmissions in neutral the pedals down let's try crossing those seat wires that's what it is we go make a jumper up for that I jumped the uh, seat wires let's see if that I would say yes. Let's go. Pick a gear. Actually. Move it so that it has some kind of gear to shoot across the floor. There we go. And move the shifter through the gears. Going towards neutral, show the tires. You get it towards the reverse. Go try to, I don't know if that's high or low range. Kind of looks low to me. Hit the pedal. Should be neutral. It is. Oh, we popped out of gear. That's low range. That's like fourth or fifth gear on the shifter. And it's crawling. That's top speed. And it's only idling too. That should be neutral. Put that stop spinning. That's high.
not bad. Again, no real way to gear this thing up because everything's kind of internally in that gearbox on a regular mower that has bells. You could change the size of the pulleys. You get it a little taller. So unfortunately, it's not going to be good for a romping tractor because it's just not going to have any top speed. But that's okay. I'm going to go throw some gear oil in there. Got that gear oil. We can call it topped off, but we got gear oil in it. I think it would be very entertaining to try to turn the mower deck on with what's left of that belt, but I kind of want it for the size. So if I break it, yeah, that might not be able to locate that very well. So let's see if we can get that off of there. We can also check our pulleys too. Yeah, that's gonna... Actually, we have such a thin area of the belt. Maybe it'll walk it right through there. I think it's going to work for the way back on, but at least we got it. Well, that seems pretty quiet. Actually, the main one seems pretty good too. Good. I was suspecting some, at least the idle is to be burned up. Let's go check the front too. They call this the mule. So this is the clutch up here that should be locked up. And it is on a set of brake shoes. Actually, they seem pretty good. A lot of crap on them, but they seem pretty good. And that's the belt size that we need. They definitely got their money's worth out of that, huh? Let's uh, put power to the clutch and see if that's functioning. I think we can just turn the key on and fire it with the switch. I think it needs to be running. I can hear it. And what that should do, actually, we're going to fire it up. I know this light's getting us. We'll fire it up. Uh, when the clutch is off or not engaged, there's a set of brake shoes that it rests against and stops this from turning. It also stops the mower deck from turning. And then when you fire it, it comes off the brake shoes and spins the uh, front pulley. Let's go fire it up and see if it does that. Are we in neutral? We're in neutral. Let's give her. to do what it should. So I pulled down my stash of the belts and I got that one. Seems to be about the closest. I'm, I think I'm within an inch, but sometimes belts, that makes a big difference. It all depends on how much the idler pulley can take up. So we're going to go try that out. I think it's 103 is the size of it. It actually looks like it worked pretty good. I had to unbolt the pulleys because there's just not enough clearance around them to get them on there. But I took them off and hit them on the wire wheel. Same with the ones on the bottom. Literally had to take this one completely right off. But the tension seems fairly decent. That's a, that's a good spread. That's the one good thing about mower decks that have the uh, electric PTO and a spring-loaded deck ten tensioner. The ones with the mechanical, the belt size is, you pretty much have to have it right on because there's the, there's a, a clutch and a brake that's mechanical lever. Say it would be like this. So to, to turn the mower deck off, it would be a lever that moves it and gives it free play. Well, if that's a, a fine window of where it will and will not operate. You'll go to put it in neutral on the mower deck, but it'll, it'll if your belt's a little bit too short, it'll keep driving the, the deck, it won't shut off. And they're, they're kind of tricky with that too. They screw with you. A lot of the companies will make like a belt that's 103 and 9 16 so if you put 103 or 104 on it doesn't work or it doesn't work very well it does kind of what i just talked about 
So with these, with the just a little preload, you know, you probably got an inch, maybe either way, fine bit of play. I see we fire it up and see how the mower deck does. I don't know if I would stand right about here. Uh, more decks off, give her a crank. I think we're good to go. Choke. <laughs> Didn't see all the way forward, that's why. Let's go try it again. That's the contacts in the starter relay. You get so close sometimes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Shot flames out the carb. Plus it's cold. All right, let's go give her a little bit of choke. Richen it up a little. No choke. I wouldn't say the break of the clutch is all that great. It didn't I mean it shut off, it should really stop that blade from spinning a little bit faster, but and that is adjustable. You take a feeler gauge and you go around that, you could tweak how close and far apart the, the pads are. That's what those little holes are for. You actually come in with a feeler gauge in three places and you adjust those three nuts to tweak um, a, a flat surface both forward and back where it rests on the uh, brake plate. Good. Got lucked out on that belt too, huh? We have, right now we have what? Nothing into it? I think just some gear oil. Oh, the chain, which I already had too. Came from a free pile. I'm gonna go change the Earl in the engine. Everything seems to be functioning. Everything operates like it should. And yeah, carb could probably come off and get clean too, but right now it's doing what it should. I was up top looking for a drain plug. There's a couple there, but. I think that's the one that we need to use on that one, right? There. Because when the ones that are on top go to nowhere. There's one right there that's literally gonna fill this whole pan up. It's not like it's got a drain hole down below. It'd be nice if they drilled a little hole there. I'm gonna go try taking that Allen wrench out and see how that does. 
I'd say that tie rod is just right in your way from seeing anything, huh? See if we can take you in a little. I don't know if it's better or worse. Yeah, we're going right up in a hole. I took a couple of clamps and pulled the belt out of the way so it doesn't piss down and get the belt. Watch, it's not even the drain plug. There we go. Yeah, it hasn't been changed in ever. <laughs> I use a couple of these clamps. On the other side. There we go. Keep them out of goo's way. Let's go check out the goo. Yeah, she's definitely got little bits of metal in there. That's that kind of color that you see. A little rainbowy metal kind of looking thing. But as I said, I, I don't think this oil has been changed in 20 years, if ever. And the motor seems like it's running okay. But it's gonna put, you can get some fresh stuff in her now. She's gonna like that. Well, the next thing's a little odd. I went to go try to raise and lower the mower deck. It's got a button on top. Yeah. That's not going to do anything. <laughs> Somebody has that clamp on it. I have a feeling maybe the spring's probably broken in it. Can you see? Heads up. There you go. Let's go pop that off of there. See if it has any kind of function. Do that. They didn't want to change the mower deck, right? Yeah, it's, it's got a spring, but it's, it's real lame. I wonder what we got to do to get that off of there. If we, is the grip hold it? Let's see if we can get. I bet you you got to drive that pin right out of it. I'll show you. So it has a pin right here, and that's what drops into the different notches. You see me pushing the button. But it just doesn't have enough balls to lift. All the way back up let's try taking a punch see if we can drive the pin out then i'm sure there's a spring somewhere maybe right up on top that falls into a well with like a washer behind it if not we could probably do the same on top maybe we can uh, put a spring on top and we'll just weld the washer onto it and give it some preload but let's go see what that does first i'm not sure what our chances are of that moving but give it a shot I was afraid of. Plus, it was probably drawn in from this side, so it really should come out this way, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get in there to get a good swing on it. I'm going to go take a peek down the hole up top and see if I can see anything, and maybe we'll just put an external spring on it to help it. That one's a little too aggressive. Maybe we'll go with this one. I'm going to cut it about half its height and then we'll get a little washer to go on top of that and we'll just weld, we'll put a spot weld right in the center of it to hold the spring part of it. See if that'll do it for us. We still need to be able to collapse it enough. It needs to be able to go down that far to clear the teeth. Be close. I wish it, I wish it was sticking out a little bit more. It's a joke there somewhere. But yeah, let's go with that. We'll, we'll cut down to that barb right there and uh, see how that works out for us. Watch your eyes. That should do it, but she's gonna melt the uh, Ha, <laughs> 
<laughs> that it was working, the spring walked its way under the washer. I got to take the bottom, because I flipped it over, I should have put the bottom end down there, but it's curling up under it and losing its tension. I'm going to pull that leg out so it can't go under the spring, under the washer rather. Yeah, okay. Because when it's like that, it's fine. It does what it should. It's got to go doctor the bottom. Actually, I wonder if we just tack that to the washer. Hmm. Hmm. My chances are I've lost my welding helmet. I bet he didn't throw the bagger assembly away with it. I gotta pull. Yeah. Well, see, that's back to functioning. Nice. What we got left? I took a look at the blade. It, it could use a sharpen. It's not banged or bent, and it's pretty even on both sides. But is there any other stuff that's the ignition switch, uh, not the ignition switch, the solenoid, ignition solenoid is clicky. That's that right there. I do believe I have another, another parts one somewhere. We could swap that out. Sometimes they'll clean themselves up to you as you're using them. What, what it is, is a coil on the inside and you energize the coil. It pulls down, it's the clicking that you hear, but then there's a set of contacts that it makes a path going across. That, to the two big terminals and it goes so from the battery here the red lead to the solenoid the solenoid when you fire the key fires a little winding pulls a set of contacts up one side contacts the side coming from the battery the other side contacts the post going the heavy wire going back down to the starter that's why some you can cross them with a screwdriver get them to start and that's what that is I'm going to run around with a can of lube and hit all the pivot points and just kind of give all those a little bit of earl for uh, smoothness of operation. Points like that, that, that. Grease gun for the front end, but I don't think you need to see all that. I think you get the idea. You're not pooping. Hmm, that might be a problem. Happens with old age. The other side shot water out when I put grease in it. Let's see what this side does. Can you even get on that? There we go. Nope. No water on that one. The other one literally just shot water out. I might have hit it with the pressure washer too that caused it. Definitely not going to win any beauty contest, that's for sure. <laughs> it's a patina tractor. We'll go with that. She's definitely uh, a little a little shy on the paint. But functionality, everything seems to be, or has come back. 
Uh, start a relay, I still need to do that. Solenoid rather, I keep calling it start a uh, relay. Uh, I would like to try to find a chute for this. I left the bagger, the metal part that held the bagger off. It's our, it's fall, actually it's winter. We already had snow, so there's no more cutting grass this year anyway. But um, I'll keep an eye out for those components and either switch it over to just a side discharge or a block off plate and or bagger, whichever I'm able to find. Again, we're gonna work on the cheap on this. The whole intent was just to try to see if we could bring this back to life for uh, little to no money and we were able to. So, seems pretty good. I haven't uh, driven it under a load yet. We haven't, you know, we just spun it on the bench. We haven't tried to drive it yet, but I think we should be okay. We'll do that next. But that's it. We're in it for about $5 worth of fluids. Even if we had to buy the components that I grabbed, the chain and the belt, you're probably, you know, 40 bucks maybe for a machine that will cut grass. It won't look great doing it, but it will cut grass better than uh, better built in some of the cheapo stuff that you get nowadays. I got two more bolts I got to get in there. Those are the ones I had to ground off the heads on. I'm happy with it. Some people uh, comment in past videos and I just, you know, every once in a while I just kind of uh, re-comment my opinion. They talk about why don't you just look it up online and look at the manuals and see how things are put together and, and work on it that way. The whole idea of trying not to look stuff up and figure out how something works is it, it improves your troubleshooting capacity, your troubleshooting, it's like practicing, you know, practicing anything. You get better at it by using your noggin instead of, you know, it's like math. If you use a calculator, yeah, you'll get the, the answer out. But if you try to think of the math equations and do it in your head, you become that much stronger at doing that. You're not reliant on that. So that's why, and that's also for the videos. It really helps with um, other people trying to understand how things work instead of just looking it up and say, okay, A, B, take these bolts. I'll take that out. That'll fall out. No, it's looking at stuff and trying to figure it out on your own and try to understand how things work. My little rant, <laughs> but, and, and that's how I enjoy it too. You know, it's much more enjoyable just trying to take things apart and figure out what makes them tick. I was like that ever since I was a little kid. I would go do that. I would think neighbors would go throw something out, just take it apart, see what made it do whatever it did. And stuff back then was a, you know, much more user friendly stuff today is, you know, just plastic molded together stuff that you came in and bolt. But back then you could. Right, I think we go fire up and uh, see, make sure that everything works as it should while you drive it. And we even went with the custom externally installed battery accessory outlet, complete with gauge and cigarette lighter. Looks perfectly safe to me. All right, let's see how she does. Cold start. It's the next day.
I think we're out of gas. Yeah, we're out of gas. See how long it takes to prime itself now that it's totally empty. Come on, get up there. <laughs> So this one pretty much just came down to a busted chain that a pin walked and caused it to uh, rub against other gears for the other end of it. Yeah, the pin, just the pin walked on it, or was floating, started rubbing on one side and caused it to elongate the chain, broke the chain. That's what took it out of life. Mower deck, you know, I don't know, it was the last time that deck spun around. I would say it's probably been a good 10 years that it sat like that for that to happen to it. Whether that was mice that chewed the rubber off or just weather that eroded it, I'm not sure. Put a little gear oil in it. The old one uh, was not so good. <laughs> just more like a, yeah. And uh, a little dirt from the transmission. Made it to be a uh, functioning part of society again. Glad that we were able to save this one and uh, bring it back around from the dump full circle back to a functioning machine again. I think I have a home for this one. Uh, we'll see in the near future. Uh, it still needs a battery. Other than that, it's uh, as far as a functioning machine, it's pretty good. And you know, of course, try to get a deflector for that or bagger set up one of the two, because that's kind of gnarly with that thing shooting debris at you. <laughs> all right guys, with that, I'm gonna go sign off. I wanna thank you all for uh, turning some wrenches with me, having a good old time and uh, saving some old junk if we can. Till the next one, see ya, bye.